guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Is it the new year? Yes. Is Christmas over? Also yes. Do I care? No, because I am going to be doing the nativity book tag and I am super excited about this. Uh, when it was brought up in our group chat about doing it and Lou was asking for some suggestions and stuff, I loved seeing all the ideas that the girls put together. You guys are brilliant. Love this tag and I knew that I couldn't wait until next Christmas to do it. We can celebrate the nativity story at any point in the year because truly, who was to say that he didn't come in January? Hmm? Hmm? So, it could be Christmas all year round. We're doing the nativity book tag, so buckle up, buttercup. Here we go. Prompt one is Angel Gabriel, a story that shares the good news of salvation. And for that, I chose A Fire and Lions by Misu Andrews. And this is the story of Daniel and his life told from the perspective of his wife. And y'all, if you haven't read this book, do it. It is so good and just so powerful. All the tribulations and trials that Daniel went through over his whole life. I mean, his ups, his downs, highs, lows, that's what I'm looking for. Um, just kind of goes through the story and just how he trusted God in the whole process and just all the things and yes this book up two is no room in the inn a book that's too big to fit on your shelf standing up uh so for this i don't have any like really tall books i might have a couple upstairs possibly but i don't think so honestly though the first thing that came to mind were my shelves <laughs> there is no room in the inn anymore like my Julie Clausen collection has officially no longer fits on my shelf standing up like this. Uh, it no longer fits on this shelf. This is her newest release. Um, I also have one of her books down here because it doesn't fit up here. My Rosanna M. White collection, same thing. This is actually not even all my books by her because I have some upstairs from her biblical fiction era. Um, yeah, it's going to get to the point. My my Karen Wittmeyer stack, just my my bookshelves in general. There's no room, but I keep buying books. So problem three is wrapped in swaddling clothes, and for that it is a book that gives you a cozy feeling. And I actually chose a series, and honestly, I could have picked so many books because books just make me feel cozy and happy, anyways. But my mind instantly went here because this is just a comfort series for me. I chose the Brides of Gallatin County series by Tracy Peterson. So it's a promise to believe in, a love to last forever, and a dream to call my own. And this series was one of the first series that I ever read in Christian fiction, like in the Christian fiction market when I was about 12 years old. And I absolutely fell in love with it. And I fell in love with Tracy Peterson and just the historical fiction world. And it was one of the first uh, set of books that I bought myself, still to this day. I love it very much. <sighs> Just comfort reads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Four is Manger, a character who had humble beginnings. And I chose To Steal a Heart by Jen Toronto. This is book one in the Bleecker Street Inquiry Agency series. And both of the main characters were orphans who turned to pickpocketing and stuff like that. They moved on from those things and became bigger and better and wonderful characters, but they both started from very, very humble beginnings. So, honestly, such a good book. But it's Jen Toronto, so, I mean, <laughs> duh. Prom 5 is The Heavenly Host Singing, a book with a musical theme, and for this I chose Love Me Tender by Janice Hanna, or Janice Thompson, um, and this book is set in like the 50s, I believe, Sock Hop, Elvis Days. I haven't read it yet, um, but it's on my list at some point, but I do know that it does deal with music. One of the main characters is a singer. 
Prompt six is Shepherds and Sheep, a story that contains an animal. And for that, I chose. It's on schedule by Summer Dow. This is book three in her wedding business series. I think that's what it was called. And you can see him on the front cover. But there's a little puppy on it, and he's on the spine. I forget what his name was. <laughs> but he's adorable. I do know he plays a big part in it, and there's sweaters involved, and super cute. Prompt seven is Three Wise Men, a story that involves travel. And for this, I chose The Wonderland Trials by Sarah Ella because there is travel between different realms, like the normal realm and then Wonderland. Eight is Gold, a book with gold on the cover. And for that, I chose Romanov. Glitzy and gold. I have a hardcover. I don't have one of the misprinted paperbacks that is missing all of the gold foil. But I will say that was a super cool misprint. They do look really cool. I've seen them in person. Almost bought one, but I was like, no, you don't need another copy of this book. You're good with the hardcovers because you have hardcovers of all of our other books that have been published by Thomas Nelson. So I didn't get it. Aren't you so proud of me? Top nine is Frankincense, a book that was gifted to you. And for this, I picked one of my Christmas presents from this past Christmas, and that is Prophets and Kings by Misu Andrews. This is a bind up of three novellas that she wrote for her Prophets and Kings series. So that's um, Isaiah's Daughter, Isaiah's Legacy, and A Fire and Lions are, are the books that are in that series. So there are little novellas from like side characters from each of the stories in this bind up. And I'm so excited that she bound it and put it in paperback and I'm so excited. Thank you, brother. Not that you watch my books, my videos, but thank you. 10 is Myrrh, a book that made you cry. And for this, I have two of literally all the books. <laughs> I literally have two in both of these. Here are the answers. Um, I'll give you the published answer first. And that is Whose Waves These Are by Amanda Dykes. Y'all, ugly cry. Like, snot I'm pretty sure um, I posted the video in my review on my blog and so if you want to see Alicia ugly crying whose waves these are it's there uh, but the other book is well it's not published uh, but it is a story that one of my best friends wrote um, and it is a beautiful story and I love it very much um, and it made me sob hard and I love that story with my whole being <sighs> that's all like I just got sidetracked for a minute just thinking about the story and how much I loved it and how talented my friends really are I've been blessed with some good ones prompt 11 is Mary and Joseph a book with a big surprise and this is kind of hard. I honestly was blanking when I was trying to find an answer because I'm the type of person that I can normally pick out the surprise, like what's gonna happen. And even then, following the prompts, oh crud, I have a, not a better answer, a different answer for this, but I will give both. Um, but once I read a book, I kind of forget that it was technically supposed to be a surprise or I can normally like figure it out as the story's going on. Um, and even, no, I think, I think I was kind of taken aback with this one. And I won't tell you what it is, but just know, Coral by Sarah Ella. There was a part that I buddy read it with a friend of mine and we were both like, what? It made sense, but also a little trippy. Um, I will say this, I'm not, I'm really... I'm really bad at saying what trigger warnings are for books just because I personally don't have uh, any triggers. Um, so it's hard for me to look at a book critically enough to say, ooh, like this is not good. Because um, I think all subject matters should be dealt with and talked about. Um, but I do understand uh, people who have certain triggers. So just know I probably won't say anything if uh, there are triggers because I am not very good at seeing them, so I apologize for that up front. But this one, I do know, um, deals heavily with depression um, and depressive thoughts and um, 
suicide and stuff like that so that is a big thing i just want anybody who is reading this to go into that but it was a very beautifully written book but sarah is very talented so i'm not surprised by that my other answer that i just thought of though um a curse of misty wayfair just that's all i'm gonna say prop 12 is jesus the story with the most christian content and for this i have two answers again um one that is pretty obvious <laughs> and then one that i will explain a little bit the first one is my obvious choice and that is jerusalem's daughter by jenna van Maurick. and this is a biblical fiction story set during passion week um and it is told it is the perspective of people who could have existed during that timeline um but yeah we get to meet some of the disciples and we get to see jesus and she did a very very wonderful job lots of christian content because it is set during the time of the bible and during passion week so that is my like obvious answer and one that i love and i'm proud of but that's option one the second answer that I have um, is the one that my heart like first went to when I read this prompt things we didn't say by Amy Lynn Green and y'all this book it is a good one it is probably one of my favorites of the year it is probably one of my favorite books now like it was just beautifully written such a beautiful story inside that to me just shines what true Christianity should be um, and really showing what God's love is supposed to look like loving everyone no matter what no matter their race no matter where they're from no matter their past but just genuinely being the light um, that's what I got out of it. I loved it. It really, really, really affected me. Major book hangover when I think about it. It makes me just sigh. It was a very good book. And for me, it had a lot of Christian content in that aspect. And it was just beautiful. Beautifully done. Loved it. I'm... It was so good. That's all I can say. Prompt 13 is to just tag someone, um, and I'm pretty sure that everyone has probably done this already, uh, or is saving it and doing it next year, so, or the Christmas, next Christmas. Um, so yeah, I don't really have anybody to tag off the top of my head, but I'll open it up to you. If you haven't done it and you want to, or if you're looking for a reason to start your own channel and you're looking for a video to do, do this one. And then come back and let me know in the comments and I will happily watch the video. Or if you're not doing a channel, totally okay. If you don't have one, I'll leave the prompts in the, in the description and you can answer them at your leisure because I would love to know what you've picked for these prompts. Again, Lou, ladies, I forgot who all helped. Um, you guys are amazing. This tag was super fun, super creative, and I loved that we took some time to focus on the real reason for the season. And again, we can celebrate it all year. Why not? Don't forget you can check out my blog at fiction.blogspot.com. You can also check out my Instagram at ForTheLoveOfChristianFiction. I think that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.